Hello, and welcome to Our Supernatural Life. Sit back, grab your blankets, and get ready to be scared. In this video, we will be talking about the 10 most haunted places in America, including that of the infamous Stanley Hotel and even a lighthouse. If you enjoy content like this, then be sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, and share it with your friends because it really does help the channel grow. Let's get right into it. Next up, we have the Velisca Axe Murder House. Based in Velisca, Iowa, this house is said to be one of the most haunted houses in America. Because back in the year 1912, the Moore family consisting of Josiah the father, Sarah the mother, and their four children, Herman, Mary, Arthur, and Paul, had a small party and invited two of their friends, Ina and Lena, to come over. The next morning, their neighbor had gotten concerned because she didn't see the Moore family come out to do their morning chores. So, she went and knocked on their door to make sure they were okay, but of course, nobody answered the door. So she tried opening it and soon found that it was locked. Her next step was to call Ross, who was Josiah's brother, but he had told her he had received no response from them either. He came over to the house to meet with their neighbor and used his spare key to open the door. As he got into the house, he opened the guest bedroom door and found the bodies of Ina and Lena on the bed, and soon after, he found the bodies of everyone else. The weird part is, based on the look of the killings, only Josiah had marks of the axe blade, while it seemed like everyone else had only been bludgeoned by the blunt of the blade. Try saying that 10 times fast. The axe was left by the killer in the guest room along with a bowl of bloody water and cigarette butts leading into the attic, which led investigators to believe that the killer had been stuck while the family was there and hid until they fell asleep. After searching for many, many days, the crime was still never solved. People who have visited the house state they can hear disembodied footsteps, items moving around the rooms, disembodied voices, apparitions, and shadows made by people who can't be seen. This place has been the forefront of multiple different ghost hunting shows and podcasts. Come with me into the chilling corridors of the Eastern State Penitentiary. Said to house some of the most hardcore criminals back in its day, its 142 year history is full of self unalivings, disease, and torture. Here, the inmates had to worry about what the guards were going to do to them next. The punishments used on inmates here were enough to send shivers down anyone's spines, such as something known as a water bath, where inmates were dunked into water and then hung out on a wall during the winter time until ice formed on their skin. The mad chair, which bound an inmate so tightly it cut their circulation off, later needing those body parts amputated, and even the hole. A dark underground cell where there was no light, no human contact, no toilet, and very little food and air. Finally closing its doors in 1971, this place is also considered by many to be one of the most haunted places in America, where each cell block has its own kind of haunt. Cell block 12 is known for echoing voices and cackling. Cell block 6 is known for shadowy figures and cell block 4 is known for visions of ghostly faces. People have even reported seeing things in the towers, most likely being a guard. One of the most known tales is by a man named Gary Johnson from back in the 1990s. Gary was the guy who helped maintain the crumbling old locks at the prison, and while he was doing his normal routine, he had gotten to cell block 4 when he says a force gripped him so tightly that he was unable to move. He described a negative and horrible energy that exploded out of the cell. He said tormented faces appeared on the cell walls and that one form in particular beckoned to him. Next on the list we have the Winchester Mystery House, based in San Jose, California. This place was allegedly built by owner Sarah Party Winchester, the heiress to a large portion of the Winchester repeating arms fortune, to appease the spirits who had been victims to the Winchester rifle. Both visitors and employees claim they have not one, but multiple spectral sightings any time they visit this house, mainly by someone named Clyde. Clyde is said to be a mustached man wearing white overalls and a Victorian boater hat who is sometimes seen either pushing a wheelbarrow in the basement or trying to repair the fireplace in the ballroom. This one site is home to multiple different hauntings, such as residual hauntings, like that of Clyde, where a moment from their past is pretty much on repeat, played over and over and over again like a video on a loop. Intelligent hauntings, which is where it seems like a paranormal entity is trying to interact with the living world, such as feeling gentle tugs on your clothes. 
and shadow figures. Probably one of the most popular where it gives you that are my eyes playing tricks on me kind of moments. Let me know in the comments section if you have ever had any of these types of encounters. Now, we have the Waverly Hill Sanatorium. This was once an important medical center based in Louisville, Kentucky. Built in 1910 to accommodate the outbreak in tuberculosis patients the city suffered, also known as the White Death. Hundreds of the patients who were housed here had died even though this was considered the most advanced tuberculosis sanatorium in the country. The hauntings of this place could not only just be tied to the fact that people were divided from family, but also because patients had not so great experiments done on them. Some patients would get balloons surgically implanted in their lungs and then filled with air to expand them and even operations where muscles and ribs were removed from a patient's chest to allow the lungs to expand further and let in more oxygen, also known as the last resort. Multiple visitors have shared their stories of strange sounds and even mysterious sightings within these walls. A little fun fact for you, in 1983 some of the city officials wanted to turn this abandoned sanatorium into a prison but locals were not so happy about that idea. Gettysburg Battlefield has had so many paranormal reports that people actually started keeping a score regarding everything they have seen, including apparitions of phantom soldiers, either marching in formation or mounted on horseback, as if they are still fighting the battle, and even reported hearing unexplained battle sounds echoing. The ghosts here are said to haunt multiple places around the site, such as Pickett's Charge, Little Round Top, Peach Orchard, and the wheat field, but none more than a place known as the Devil's Den. This rock formation served as a Confederate sniper's nest for much of the battle and more very vicious fighting. It is said the ghost sightings had begun in the area shortly after the battle and have been a regular occurrence ever since. Just like any other haunted place, there are some ghosts whom are seen more than the rest. People describe one of them as having an unkempt, long-haired figure, shoeless, wearing ragged clothing and a floppy brimmed hat. People even reported him saying something aloud to them right before vanishing without a trace. Another one being known as the Phantom Regiment which are supposedly the ghostly remnants of a confederate union. You can still hear their battle drums and footsteps echoing through the night. The recent hotel, also deemed America's most haunted hotel by many, is based in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and said to be haunted since before it was even fully built. And no, it's not because it was being built on native burial grounds. It's because one of the Irish stonemasons had plunged to his death in what is now room 218 and is now said to be the room with the most paranormal activity to this day. Okay, but that can't be the only reason it's haunted, right? No. This place has also been a girls college and even a cancer hospital where a man by the name of Norman Baker claimed to have the cure for cancer. Guests have witnessed hands coming from out of the bathroom mirror, hearing cries of a falling man from the ceiling, and doors opening then slamming shut, unable to be opened again. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, also known as the Weston State Hospital, based in Weston, West Virginia, was a building designed for only 250 patients but housed a total of 2,400 psychiatric patients, with four or five people being in a room only made to fit one person. It got to the point where the asylum even started using the hallways as rooms for the patients. It's no wonder this asylum was overcrowded considering it held more than just psychiatric patients. It also held people with asthma, tuberculosis, rabies, and even wives who had been insubordinate to their husbands. Man, in this day and age, everyone alive would have been admitted at some point in time. The patients attending here had multiple experiments done on them, including lobotomies, which left the healthy patients with irreparable damage and hemorrhages, something known as the ice pick method, which involved slipping a thin pointed rod into the patient's eye socket, and then a hammer was used to sever the connective tissue in the frontal lobe of the brain and many more. It's no wonder this place is haunted. I wouldn't be very happy if someone stabbed my eye for experiment purposes. After the hospital had closed in 1994, a graveyard was built next to the hospital, meaning the patients buried there are trapped at the asylum against their own will even after their death. The place inspired Stephen King's The Shining. 
The Stanley Hotel, based in Estes Park, Colorado, has had several guests state they can hear disembodied voices and being touched by something or someone they can't see. It is said the room with the most activity is that of room 217 because after a flood had made the power in the hotel go out, the owner, Freeland Stanley, took it upon himself to install a gas lantern in each room so the guests would have light. Well, a leak had caused a buildup of gas to form in room 217 and when the head chambermaid, Elizabeth Wilson, had walked in, in with a lit candle, it set off a massive explosion. Elizabeth had miraculously survived but was launched from the room's entrance all the way to the dining hall located on the first floor. After she had woken up from a coma, she had returned to work for the hotel until 1950. People say they could still see her spirit in room 217, but don't worry, they also say she is more helpful than she is scary. Guests have shared stories of waking up to their room being tidier than the night before with their clothes folded and their suitcases organized. But she isn't the only spirit said to be resting here. The owner, Freeland Stanley, died in 1940 at the age of 91, and many people believe his presence can still be seen and even felt at the hotel, mainly at the bar and billiard room. And even his wife, Flora, is known to be tinkering around on the hotel's piano. Guests have stated hearing children's <laughs> laughter in the halls with no one to be found. On the coast of Florida lies the St. Augustine Lighthouse. Like all hauntings, the spirits that roam the grounds of the lighthouse didn't just appear from nothing. This site has been said to be haunted by not only caretakers but also the shipwrecked sailors it was meant to protect. One of them being Peter Rasmussen, the lighthouse's very first keeper. He loved nothing more than his cigars, and when people come to visit, they state smelling the lighthouse being overcome with the stench of cigars even though no one is smoking. There is even said to be the ghosts of two young sisters who died on the property, and the story goes as follows. A man named Hezekiah Pitty was hired to renovate the tower in the late 1800s. His daughters, Eliza and Mary, were playing inside a cart that was being used to carry materials back and forth to the lighthouse. When the cart broke loose, they weren't able to jump out in time, and the cart slid rapidly into the bay, plummeting both girls to a watery death. Now, the only thing left behind is the laughter of children people <laughs> hear when visiting this historical landmark. We have the Pine Barrens, mainly known for the Jersey Devil, also known as the Leeds Devil, Many, many years ago, a woman by the name of Miss Leeds had become distraught after finding out she was expecting for the 13th time and screamed out, Let it be the devil! in disgust. Well, be careful what you wish for because when the baby was born, it had the appearance of a devil. The legend states the creature then gave a screech, unfolded its wings, and flew out the window towards the adjacent swamp and has been stalking the Pine Barrens ever since. Multiple people have reported seeing the Jersey Devil up until even the most recent years. Have you ever seen the Jersey Devil? Let me know down below.